Mm. All right, what I'm going to show you today is how to take apart a puffer fish um, box so that you can reuse it year after year in workshops and with um, students. So one of the first things I do is I plug it in to see if it works. And what this will allow me to do when I pull out this um, control board is have an extra control board that I know is good so that if we need to reuse it, um, we can reuse it um, when somebody else goes catastrophically wrong. In, um, I've got my volts in here. What I want to do next is test the motors and I'm going to see which motor is which. Um, this one says up down so I'm going to hopefully believe it's up down and see if it goes green, red. So this one is good. Let's try, hmm, don't know which one of these is going to work. I'm going to hold them both up in the air. So got this one going one direction, the other direction, this one one direction, and the other direction. So I know that this is a good board that my voltmeter is working on here, my ammeter. So I'm going to, when I take this board out, mark that it's good and, and hold on to it. So I'm going to unplug this. First thing you're going to do is um, remove all the screws. I've already loosened them here. I'll finish doing that. And you want to keep them somewhere safe so you don't lose them. And then we'll go ahead and uh, pull apart the box. So now I'm going to take apart the box. And um, you'll want to loosen all these strain reliefs that you have here. So I'm going to loosen this. You might need pliers to get this a little bit looser. And on the inside there's another part there too and you can start loosening it from there. Turning it. Get it loosened. Got this loosened now. And it should be able to come apart. Let me go ahead and Pull this out, get this, um, this is still tight, I'm going to have to loosen that some, so I can pull the wire through, there we go. So now I've got the wire, I can pull it up. Same thing with your tether relief, use some pliers to work around there and loosen it up. So I'm going to lock them on there holding it a little bit on the inside there so I can get it to turn. And now I can uh, loosen it up from the inside, unscrew it. And unscrewing it on the inside. Getting it free. And then pulling that through. And then what I can do then is to move it up. Oops. Get it loose that way. So what we want to do on the motor wires is we can go ahead and just unscrew all those and remove them. Unscrew the power wires so you need your small little jewelers kit to do that. Loosen these terminal blocks. They used hot glue on there. You can pick that off. Not that it helped, but pick it off there. So now I've got my motor wires free. And the tether wires don't lose um, any of these screws either, these set screws. What I'm going to do on these is um, you can um, go ahead and start unscrewing all of those and keeping them um, so that they're. Um, nice and long but you probably can trim them too you're not going to lose much of the length on there and then you can loosen that later so i'm going to go ahead and just trim these with my flush cutters 
and cut that red green wire the blue brown wires make sure you don't cut any of these wires that's going into your ammeter and your voltmeter and you can cut that and you can cut that and then when you loosen these up you can just knock those out now these are the wires you don't want to cut because they're getting really short over time so this is where you just want to unscrew them because I, what we're trying to do right now is free this board and save this board for the next time somebody uses this box. So I'm loosening all these. And I'm gonna just pull them out, pull them out. And now we've still got the same length on these so they can reuse them and we don't have to worry about that. So the last piece we need to do is to um, pull this off and this is where a flathead screwdriver comes into hand comes handy. What you want to do is just kind of work it under the board. We're trying to get those switch pins loosened up a little bit. And once you get it up enough, you can just wiggle it and pull it off with your hand. So now I've got this. I'm going to mark it as good, and I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm also going to loosen those up get those little pieces out of there and then I'm gonna take this what I want to do next is save all these parts right into my box so let's loosen this up again so I can pull this out pull this out for my tether strain relief and then get my other screw that goes inside the box there. I'm going to put that into here and then I need the pieces off of the wire here. So the motor wires, screw that together and then screw this on there. I'm going to place this back onto here Put all of my screws back in place and then that'll be ready to go for the next time when we order the new kit that goes with it. What you'll want to do is keep your tether. The other thing is take apart your tether cross and you can also keep your motor, um, motor wires separate. So let me show you what I mean. So on your motor wires, don't and take that off of there. What you'll want to do is just keep this separate and um, don't worry about this part here already being soldered and waterproofed. Um, it's just one less step for the next group to do next time. Um, so you just leave it like so and that's where the velcro wraps come in handy. On your tether, what you're going to want to do is on your tether cross is go ahead and loosen these up. So go ahead and unscrew those. You're going to do the same over here. And pull them free and then take this apart. And here's where you have in your tether cross. Let's see here. This one's a bit of a mess. There we go. This is, wow. <laughs> they did a number on that one. What you want to do with this as best you can is to save as much of these brown black wires as you can because each time we have to cut them a little bit and they keep getting shorter and shorter over time. The tether doesn't matter as much because you have like a 25 foot tether and so if you lose an inch or two every year it's not really going to matter. So what you can do on your tether is just cut that off um, here. I'm going to use these flush cutters and that will be ready to go. You want to save all these cross pieces together and put them all back together as a cross so this screws into there and then that's going to go back into here so let's take this apart pull this out 
and then um, we're not going to be able to get that piece off till we clean these up. But then um, eventually what you'll have is this whole thing put back together and this other end screwed on there for the next group. What the best thing to do on this is to um, get a blade and start cutting away at it and um, see how much of that wire you can save. So I'll show you that in the next video here. Okay. Okay. So what I've done is um, take some of that wrap they had around here, separated all of the wires, and what I want to do is to get up into this heat shrink close to where these soldered fittings are and then clip the wire there on these brown um, and black wires. So with this one, I um, cut into the um, heat shrink here and I pulled it up and now I can start to see bare wire there. So that's where I want to cut that. And I'll show you on the next one how to do it. So I've got this and I'm gonna just cut it right there. And so this way I'm saving as much of this wire length as I can and that can go in the trash. So let's take another one of these. This one's got a lot of glue on it so it looks a little bit more um, hard to get at, but we'll go ahead and pick at it. So the thing is you wanna pick at it as much as you can without the blade so that you don't cut into the wire. And then on here, I can see there's still some space in there. So what I'll do is like work this up into that space so the blade is away from the wire and into the shrink wrap. You also wanna be very careful that you don't cut yourself. Famous last words, huh? So just sort of work your way through there. I'm starting to make some progress. Once you get that, sometimes you can just keep pulling at it and you don't need to use the blade again. So I'm just pulling at it and I get to the point now where I'm seeing bare wire and then I can go ahead and just cut it there. And these flush cutters come in really handy because you can make a nice even little cut there and not waste any more of that wire. And that one's ready to go. So you'll go ahead and, and do that with the rest of these and um, save as much of these brown black wires as you can.